Hello, everyone here on Free Code Camp looking to build a successful MVP and avoid making major mistakes when developing an app or online product. My name is Annie Okubo and I'm a software engineer and course creator on YouTube who has also taken part in fintech incubators such as Barclays Techstars for early stage financial apps. I am here to show you why building an MVP or minimal viable product is a proven way forward when building out apps today. So why is an MVP important and how can the lack of one lead to the demise of your dream startup? Here is an example of a failure of an app with $41 million in funding back in 2012. The failure of the Colors app could be put down to a few things, but its premature huge launch without testing the product with an MVP is considered to be the main culprit. The media attention from the $41 US dollar million funding guarded quite a lot of people waiting to download the app. But once they did, most of them quickly ended up using it and deleting it, never to return again. Co-founders of Colors admitted that they put out a product that they thought was good to a massive crowd who ultimately ended up disagreeing. Having an MVP that could be slowly tested and adapted before such a big launch could have saved this company. But what exactly is an MVP? We will find out soon enough. By the end of this course, you will know the steps necessary to develop your minimal viable product and have an understanding of the mistakes startups make in order to avoid them yourself and have a fully working MVP that you can adapt for your own use cases thanks to this one hour tutorial. If you ever need to skip to one of the sections, make sure to use the timestamps in the description below. Otherwise, let's get going. This course is made possible thanks to a charitable grant made from Retool, the powerful app building platform low-code solution for creating React-like apps. Companies like Brex, Played, Ramp, Amazon, NBC use Retool for their internal tools and many startups use it to build a variety of MVPs. Now, why is an MVP useful to me? MVP stands for Minimal Viable Product. It's when startups release the most minimal core product to get things going in terms of testing and developing. Here are four reasons why MVPs are essential to building modern apps. Number one, an MVP allows you to collect data and feedback from your customer base. Number two, it also allows you to iterate on what you have before release. Building products is an iteration game. The product is forever changing, meaning that you want to choose an approach where changes can be made quickly and without too many stakeholders involved. This is where having a small team and very flexible and relatively inexpensive tooling at the beginning can be very beneficial. And another great reason to have an MVP is to reduce overall development time. And finally, a big one for tech startups is VC funding. You might have a great startup idea in your head, but how do you know it's a great idea? You can't show people the idea in your head, let alone test it out to get feedback. And guess what? Without that feedback and general data collection, you aren't likely to get any investors knocking on your door. So you look into hiring a dev team, but uh oh, that's expensive and you have no money as no one will invest. You're stuck in a chicken and egg situation. Building an MVP will allow you to spin up apps or software as fast so you can get to testing and potentially gaining revenue to show investors straight away. So we have covered what an MVP is and why you might want to make one, but are you ready to start your entrepreneurial journey quite yet? To show you how fast this can be done on your own without hiring any help and spending a bomb, we will be building out an MVP that Colors should have built in the first place. Okay, to build it, we will be using Retool. Note that Retool is a platform intended for building powerful applications, but we are here using it to build a very simple app to get you started. You can learn more about Retool on their website, in the documentation, or watch one of my previous videos where we built out a couple of more complex applications. Okay, so what are we waiting for? By the end, you will have this app that will allow you to view all your posts along with who posted them and who viewed them. And if we click into one, you'll be able to view the whole thing as well as delete it and upload posts too. Okay, so we're gonna be using a lot of APIs for this. And we're also gonna have this messaging system that allow you to message users in your database. Okay, so ta-da, there we go. We are messaging in the app as well. Right, so let's do it. 
Okay, so let's do it. Let's start off on the retool platform. So it is uh, free to sign up. Just go ahead and select try for free. I'm going to sign in though because I already have an account with Free Cocamp. So that's what I'm going to do as I've used this many, many times before. So here we go. This is what the dashboard should look like. As you'll see here, there's some previous uh, projects that I have made. Let's start from scratch though. I'm just going to create a new and I'm going to create an app. So let's go ahead and call this something. I'm going to call this Colors App, okay, because we are making a MVP of what I think the Colors App should have launched with to get going. So there we go. Okay, so here was what the app should look like to you and me. It's got some boilerplate table with some boilerplate code, as well as all the tabs kind of um, popped up so that we can see them. However, we can minimize them if we wish. So just like that. And perhaps we should, because the first thing that I'm going to do is just set everything out in the UI before we start connecting our database to MongoDB, before we start connecting to AWS and all that. So let's go ahead and do it. So as you can see, a table has been populated for us with some, uh, just some dummy data. We're not going to be needing this. So I'm just going to go ahead and click delete on this. Great. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is put in a tabbed container. So I'm just going to drag in a tabbed container, and this is going to essentially kind of symbolize our app itself. So here we go. Here is our app. And in here, well, we can actually do a bunch of personalization. So for example, first off, I can decide that I want the, um, well, we can have transitions to slide in from one to the other just like so, so from view one to view two to view three. And then of course we can rename these views. So I'm actually gonna do that. I'm gonna choose to call this my feed. So like the apps feed, I'm gonna choose to call this my timeline to see a timeline of all the pictures that I have posted. Me personally, I'm also gonna have a tab to upload an image from the app. Of course, we need to do that as an app. We wanna be able to upload our own photos. I'm also gonna have an inbox. Okay, an inbox so that we can see messages and also message other people from the app itself. And I'm also going to have another one called view. This is going to be a secret one where we can actually view an individual post itself. Okay, so this one is going to be hidden. So I'm going to write hidden true. And that will just mean that we can't see it here, although it does exist and we can navigate through it by clicking different things. So there we go. That is step one of my tabbed container. We can, of course, do many, many other things. For example, if I want this to be at the bottom, well, all I have to do is select the element and then just scroll down to all the other options that we have available. For example, I can choose to uh, change the color of the footer. So I can choose to have this, this kind of dark gray color just like so and of course this means that we need to show the footer so just show the footer like this I am actually going to drag these tabs down into the footer itself so that they are in the middle and I'm just going to make the alignment center just like so okay and maybe let's make this a little bit bigger so we can see okay so Great. One other thing we can do that is kind of cool is actually add little images to this as well. So for example, on my feed, I can actually choose to have an icon, which I am definitely going to do. I'm going to search for the icon. So I'm going to have a little home icon. Perhaps let's go ahead and choose this one. I think it's quite cool and position it to the left. Let's go ahead and also do one for the timeline. So let's search for something to do with time as this is a timeline. So let's choose this one for upload. I'm of course going to choose something to do with uh, maybe camera, just so people know that this is for uploading photos and for inbox. This one is easy. Let's just choose an inbox. So there you go. So there we have it. This is looking wonderful. There's a lot more things we can do. For example, we can choose the hover text. Maybe let's just make it like a lighter color and the selected text. Again, I'm just going to make this a lighter gray just because I think it's much cooler and much neater. 
Whee! So there we go. We are now sliding through each of these. Let's carry on. One thing we can do as well to make our lives easier is actually rename these if we wish. If you find it easier to do so, then please feel free to rename these. I'm quite happy with this being tabs one, but that option is there for you too. Now, in the header, I'd quite like to actually display whatever tab we are on. So this is going to be our first piece of, I guess, retool syntax that you're going to experience. First off, I'm just going to grab some text and just put it in here like so, making sure that it is in the middle. So let's just get rid of any of this and make sure it's aligned in the center. So I'm going to choose to make this an H3 tag. So we can use HTML elements in here. And then I'm going to use these two double curly braces. So this is some retool syntax in order to get tabs one. So this tabs one that we were just on and tabs one comes with a variety of things. So if you click the dot, they will pop up. We want to get the selected label. Okay. So this just means if I click on one of these, this text will change dynamically based off what we have written here. So once again, you just pick out the element or pick out the component. In this case, it was tabs one. You can hover over it if you need just to get the name. And then a variety of options should show up if you press a dot. And we have just gone for the selected label. So this is looking wonderful. Let's carry on. Now I'm just going to put in some more text here. I am actually going to hard code this just to be my name, just because, you know, for now, I think that's fine. So I'm just going to do that here. So Anya Kubo is the user of this. And we can, of course, align this to the right if we wish and center it this way too. And on the left, once again, I am going to put in an image. There's two ways you can do this. You can just use a circular image. So if I just show you a circular image, looks like this and we can, you know, resize it to whatever size we want. Or if we are very particular about the size, we can actually write our own HTML. So I'm going to do that for this option just to show you the difference. So here is just exactly the same as you would do in normal HTML. I'm going to write an image tag and for my image, well, the alternative text for this is going to be avatar of user. And then the source of this is just going to be, I'm just going to use an image of me from the internet. Again, I'm just hard coding this because we don't have any data to work with quite just yet. So here we have an image of me. I'm going to copy the image address from the free code camp website. So there we have an image of me and now I can actually pick this out. So maybe let's give this the class of avatar just like so. And then this means I can now grab the class of avatar and give this a height of 20 pixels. Maybe let's make it 25 pixels, a width of 25 pixels, a border radius of 50%. And then maybe let's give it some margin uh, left, five pixels and margin top two pixels. Okay. So there we go. I've just made a custom HTML element and I'm just going to drag it in like so, making sure to select the blue writing. And great. And perhaps let's actually rename this. I'm going to rename this to avatar image for us to pick out if we need. Now, the next thing I want to do is actually populate our feed with some posts. So to do this, we're actually going to start working with resources and we have many to our disposal. If we look here in the resources, you will see all the ways that we can connect. So if I go ahead and create a new resource, we can use all of these databases. We can use all of these APIs and we can use a REST API in order to connect to whatever API we really wish that uses REST. So there we have it. We are going to use MongoDB for no other reason than I had to choose a database. So I'm going to go ahead and do that.
So if you haven't used MongoDB already, please do go ahead and sign up. Once again, we are going to be using the free version of it. So go ahead and start for free. I'm just going to sign on with Google because I've already used MongoDB a few times before. So here is my dashboard. Once you do fill out all the things necessary in order to get to here, this is what you should see. So under my organization, you will see the projects that I have made so far. So just make sure you're at forward slash projects. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a new project. My project name is going to be uh, Retour. And I'm just going to click next. OK, I am going to be the project owner. So let's go ahead and create a project just like so. And wait for that to do its thing. So now that we have our project called Retool, let's go ahead and build a database. I'm going to choose the free shared option. So please go ahead and choose that one, too. And I'm just going to go with the suggested uh, region for me and just click Create Cluster. OK, so our cluster is being made. That is doing its thing. We're going to have to fill out some more things first. So I'm just going to select a username and I'm going to auto generate a secure password and copy it and save it somewhere safe because we are going to be needing that later. Don't forget to also press create user. Now I'm just going to go down here and we are also going to add our current IP address. So just go ahead and add your current IP address. This just means that you will be able to access the database from your current IP address. And we're also going to add some retool ones in later as well so that our platform has access to the database too. So once you have done that, let's just go ahead and click finish and close. OK, and go to databases. So now this is doing its thing. And once it has finished, we will be able to connect our database and then also create our first collection. And great. So the first thing that we're going to do is actually add something to our collections. We're going to have two collections. We're going to have a post collection and a message collection. So let's go ahead and add our own data. I'm just going to call this tests and the collection name is going to be posts. OK. So please just go ahead and do that. Now, before we do anything else, I'm just going to connect this to our retool. So let's go back to the overview and then connect. And then we're going to connect our application and just take this URL right here. And now go back to the connector resource page that we just started. Now, what should we call this? Well, let's just call this colors and then use the database string and just paste that in like so. And the password that I ask you to save, just go ahead and replace that here. So we've got the username and the password. We're also going to have to allow these IP addresses as well as our own. So back in here, under network access, please go and add those three IP addresses of retools. So just go ahead and put in one, put in the second one, just like so. And then finally, the third one as well. OK, so just add in those three IP addresses like so. And that's it. And wait for them to be active. OK, so back in here, we have the connection string. We've replaced the password with our password. This is looking good. And once those have been accepted and they are active, we will test our connection. OK, so just wait for that to be done. And great. So now if we test our connection, we should see connection successful. So that is looking good. Let's go ahead and create our resource and then go back to the resources page. So we've created our resource now. Let's go ahead and go back in here. So back to the retool project, browse the collections, and I'm going to show you how to create a first post. I'm just going to go ahead and insert document. I'm going to choose to write it in JSON as I feel more comfortable with this. And how do we want our post to look? So our post as an object, well, it's going to have an image URL. OK, and it's also going to have a description. So a description of the post itself. So we can have my favorite Thai spot, for example. We're going to have the author 
So in this case, it's going to be Anya Kubo, which is, of course, me. We'll have the views of this post. I'm just going to say that the views are 20. We're also going to have an author avatar, which is just going to be an image of me. And then we're also going to have a title. So a title of this is going to be Thai Dreaming Favorite, spelt the English way. And then we're also going to have a time stamp, which is going to be ISO 8601 timestamp so that we can essentially order these posts by, uh, you know, most recent on and so on. And then, of course, we're also going to have an ID. This is going to be our unique ID. For now, I'm just going to give this one, which is separate to the object ID. So now let's fill this out. I'm just going to be using images off the internet for now. Again, we are going to be using AWS S3 buckets to store our images, but you know, we want to see some stuff now. So I'm just going to do this. Please be aware though, that if these images go off the internet, then you will not be able to see them anymore because we have no control over them. So I'm just going to paste an image that I found on the internet of Thailand. And I'm also going to just paste an image of myself off the free code camp website. Okay, so this is it. I'm just going to insert that like so. So at the moment, we just have one post. I'm just going to duplicate this and just create another. So this one's going to be from John Wu. He's got 121 views. This is going to be London pub love. Idea of this is going to be two. And then the timestamp. Well, let's actually give this description my usual spot in London. And then let's get an image of a London pub. Just put it in like so, and then put in an avatar and get today's date in ISO 8601 format. Okay, so that's today. Let's make this actually yesterday and insert. And I'm just going to add the timestamp to here as well. So let's edit this and put in today's timestamp. Okay, so we've got two posts here at the moment, just like so. I'm gonna now retrieve these from the app. So to do this, I'm going to just get a resource. So let's just get this down here. I'm gonna make a new resource query. This resource query is going to be to colors, posts, and save and run. And great, you will even see a schema pop up. So now if I type in the collection posts or select it from a drop down and just click run, you will see my two posts. Okay, you're seeing literally these two posts right here. Wonderful. So this is looking great. So now that we have to date that data, let's get to using it in order to populate our feed with a list. So let's get going. So to do this, I'm going to find a list view and just drag it in here like so. It's going to get rid of this for now. Get rid of the bottom one, two, and let's create our list. So the number of rows where well, we're going to get our curly braces again and use the get posts data length in order to essentially make as many rows as we need. In this case, it's going to be two as our post consists of two posts made up of the data that we have. Okay, so an array of those two things. Now I'm just going to put in a container. So our first item is going to be a container and you will see how the list will just automatically create two of those because we have two items in our list. It's created two containers. So all I'm going to do is just make this look a little bit different. I'm going to show a footer. I'm not going to show a header and I'm going to also put in an icon. So let's search for an icon and just drag it in here like so. And then this is going to be an I because this is going to symbolize how many views we have. So there we go. And I'm just going to align it to the right. 
let's also put in some text so that we can actually see how many views that we are getting on this visually thanks to our data so i'm just going to put in some text and we can now access the data by going into get posts data and then looping with an i okay so we're just going to loop and then retrieve back the views for those of you who are familiar with javascript this should be familiar this i syntax should be familiar that is how you would loop over everything from the get posts data array in order to get the values from the object we are looping looping over so once again i'm just going to align that to the right next i'm also going to put in the author okay so again i'm just going to drag in some text just like so and I'm going to go into the get post data. I'm going to loop over each item and get the author in order to display who exactly posted this image. And for the image itself, well, I actually want to put in some custom HTML. So once again, I'm just going to go into the HTML just like so and drag it and drop it in here and in here. Well, what do I want? I want a div that is going to be a media container. So let's just go ahead and write our div and give it the class of media container, just like so. And that's going to hold. So once again, I'm just going to put in a div and the class to this is going to be image container. So let's give this the class of image container. And this is actually going to hold our image, which is a self closing tag. And the source of this, well, we're going to actually use our two curly braces in order to go into the get post data. We're going to loop over each item and get the image URL. OK, so that's what I'm going to do. And then I'm also going to make a new div that's going to be our text container. So here is a div. I'm going to give this the class of text container like so I'm just going to put in a p tag and this is going to hold the title so once again we're going to go to get post data I'm going to loop and just get the title okay so there we go we're having some issues with the Thai dreaming image I wonder why that is but we'll look into that in a bit so now in the CSS, let's actually pick out everything that we have to style, which is going to be the media container for one. And the media container, well, I just want to hard code everything so they all have a height of 200 pixels. And then also we're going to have the uh, image container. like so and the image container is also going to have a height of 200 pixels uh, and then also a width of 100 percent and we're going to have overflow as hidden so just like that perhaps we can make it smaller if we wish i'm quite happy with this if you want to make it smaller then please feel free to do so great and i'm also going to say that the any image that lives inside the media container is going to have a width of 100% to make sure that any image is, you know, stretched out to the width and then position relative and just center it. So that means from the bottom, I just want it to be 50%. And one last thing, let's get the text container. And let's give it some padding. So I'm going to go with five pixels from the top, 15 pixels from the side, and then eight pixels, and then also 15 pixels. Okay, and then also I'm going to give it a background color. And that background color is going to be uh, a little bit transparent. So I'm going to go with 0, 0, 0, 0 0.5. The text, well, the text, I'm actually going to give it white. So there we go. So we can read it. Uh, let's also give this position 
relative and let's give it some bottom and let's also move it a little bit like so okay so that's what it should look like just ignore that one for now so it's kind of like an overlay with the title like so uh, and also maybe let's start any p tags that live inside the media container so any p tags that live inside here so we don't want to affect any other p tags i'm gonna have the font size of 20 pixels great so that is looking wonderful we've just created our custom HTML element, which is going to be this image. This is looking great. So perhaps let's fix this image problem. Let's go back in here and see what is happening. It obviously just doesn't really like this URL. Let's see why. Hmm, I'm not sure, but let's find another image of Thailand. Just going to go with this one right here. Copy image. And let's just replace it like so. An update. And great. So that is looking so much better. Make sure this says overflow. Make sure this says image container. Okay, perhaps we don't need that. This is looking great. Okay, so there we have our two posts. Of course, we can add more. We'll do that in a bit. What I want is to actually add a trigger. If we click on this, it will take us to the display of the image itself, just by itself. So let's go ahead and do that. What I wanna do is add an interaction and that's gonna be on click and it's gonna control a component. That component is going to be the tabbed container and I'm gonna set the view to be view which is if you remember one of the tabs that is hidden so that's what i want to happen and when that happens i actually want to write another query to get an individual post so at the moment if i click this it will just go to the view page i now want to write another query so let's go ahead and do that i'm going to write another query this query is just going to be get individual post so get post and i'm going to go into the colors resource and what I'm gonna do is look in the collection called posts. So posts, and I'm gonna use find one this time because I wanna find one post based on an ID. So the query I'm gonna to have to write is ID, and then I'm going to choose the post I clicked on. So get posts, again, data, and whatever I looped, ID. Okay, so that's all I am essentially going to do I'm going to preview that just to see what comes back and once again let's go to the feed it's going to save and run this and if i click on this that should get me whatever posts i clicked on id okay so that is what should be happening right now if i click on this so all I'm gonna do is create an image, drag it in here like so. And the source of this, well, it's not gonna be this cute kitten, even though that would be quite nice. I'm gonna get posts data. This time, just the individual post data, not post data, image URL, okay? So let's try this again. Okay, so this just means that if we click on here, as long with going to the view, we also need to control a query and that is the get post query. So that is looking good. Let's go ahead and trigger the click now. So I'm just going to get rid of this. Click on here, trigger the click and great so we are getting that individual post right now we're essentially running the get post query another thing we can do of course is add more stuff to this so let's create i'm going to maybe put in the author name again at the bottom so just drag in my name right here and then get rid of this and get post data individual author 
Okay, so I'm just putting my name right here. And then we can also put in a button to delete it. And this will run the delete query for the post. So that is something that we can also do. So let's go ahead and do that. Why not? So to do this, well, we're going to have to write a, another query. So let's go ahead and get these two tabs up. I'm going to a new query, so resource query. And this time, this is going to be to delete post. Okay, so that is what our query is going to do. And the collection for this is going to be posts. The action type is going to be delete one. And we're essentially going to look for the ID of this post. So this post is get post data ID. Okay, and if we preview this, Okay, the result says that this should work. If I save this now, we need to now connect the button to that query. So let's go ahead and maybe say this is delete. I'm also going to make it red just because I think that red is much more um, associated with deleting things. So on click of this now, event handler on click control query delete post. Okay, so that's what I want to do. We can also do it that on success, so on success of this post, so here we go, on success, we can also be taken back to the home page. So control the component, we want the tabbed container and the view we want to set is the feed. So that is also something that we can do. So should we go ahead and delete this post? Of course, it will mean that we won't have much data to work with, but you know, let's let's just go ahead and do it. In fact, I'm just going to perhaps uh, copy this so that we can just reinsert it back in as soon as we do it. So copy that. And let's check it out. So back to the feed. I'm going to click on this. So let's trigger the click. Okay, we're viewing the image on the view page. And let's go ahead and now click delete. So that will trigger the delete post. And then it takes us back to the home page. However, this is still here. So perhaps we need to get all the posts again. Because if we refresh this, okay, so that is correct. So once again, that's fine. We can open this up and on the delete post query. So on success, we want to go back to this, we want to go back to the feed, but we also want to rerun the query that will get all the posts, right? Because we want the freshest posts. So that is what we're going to do. So let's try that one more time. I'm just going to reinsert the document that we just deleted. So insert that. To refresh this, I'm going to hide that. So now we should see two posts. Let's once again, just trigger the click for this. So trigger click. So we view the whole image now, and then I want to delete the whole image. So then it should be deleted. It should take us back here and we get the freshest posts. Wonderful. So this is looking good. Once again, I'm just going to reinsert that in so that we have more data to work with. Great. So this is all looking good. So we've done the feed. Next, we want to show the timeline of just our posts. So what I'm going to do is actually make a new query. So resource query, and let's call this get your posts. Okay. And once again, we're going to look in the colors resource. We're going to look in the collection called posts. And this time we're going to find, but we're also going to write a query for this because the author of this, well, we just want it to be us, right? So us is here in text two. So we can use the component text two to get its value. So text two value is going to be the username. Okay. So that's just what I'm going to do right here. Like so. So again, we can also preview that it's Anya Kubo. So if I preview this here, it should just return back one post, which is the one post I made the author Anya Kubo. So this is looking good. I'm just going to save it. And all I'm now going to do, in fact, we can just copy this, right? I can copy this list. So I'm just going to hide this and just put it in here because it's the exact same thing. Perhaps you just need to drag it in here. It's the same type of view that we want. 
Okay, so that will have all the same functionality to it. And if we click on it, we'll be able to see the timeline too. Okay, so that's what we want. We just need to now replace the data that's being fed into this with instead of going to get posts, we're going to get go into get your posts data instead. Okay, so that's the length of this. And now here, we're also going to make sure that we're using the correct queries. So get your posts, get your posts. Okay, and I believe that should be it uh, here to get your posts. Otherwise, we're using a different query for this, get your posts. And that should be it. Okay, so once again, here we have our feed that should have everyone in it, unless we've deleted something. Okay, so here's our feed of the two items. If we go on the timeline, we just see all my posts as Anya Kubo. And if we click on this post or trigger the click, it should be taken to the view of the post. However, it would seem that if we're on our timeline, the trigger will also need to be changed. Get post trigger. This is going to have to be another query. So let's write another query. So we get your post. So we've got our individual post. We're also going to write a resource called get your post individual. Get your post. Okay, and once again, it's going to look in colors. It's going to find one this time. And we're going to look in it. So I'm just going to save this because we're going to essentially just copy this, what we did for the individual post. Forget your post individual. But instead of getting the posts, we're going to get your posts plural ID that we clicked and save and run, which means that if we're now on the timeline, the trigger that we want to hit is get your post and not get post. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Let's check it out. If I trigger this. It should go to here. And now we can use get your post individual to render this and also get your post individual to render this. And on the delete, make sure that is saved to the collection posts. And on the delete, once again, we're going to have to write a new query. So make sure this is delete your post like so. And once again, we're going to look in the collection posts. We're going to delete one. And what do we want to delete? Well, we want to get the ID of your post that you are viewing and on success, we want to control the component. We want to control the component. Tabbed container, set the current view to feed. And then also on success, we want to rerun the query to get all the posts. Great. So this is all looking wonderful. So once again, let's go on our timeline. Let's trigger the click. And we are indeed getting the correct post. So this is all looking wonderful. So now that we've done that, let's carry on. So we've got the feed, we've got the timeline. We'll work on the upload. Next, I just want to work on the messages. So for this, we're actually going to make a new collection. So let's go ahead and go back in here and just create a new collection that this time is going to be called messages just like so and click create. Now, what are our messages going to look like? Well, our messages are each going to have again, a timestamp as we're going to want to filter out, you know, the order on which the are coming in. So a timestamp is going to be necessary. We're also going to have a from. So for example, this is going to be from Anya Kubo and it's going to have a two and the two is going to be to John Wu. John Wu. And of course, we're going to have the message itself. I'm not very imaginative. So apparently I just text John Wu. Hey there, because, you know, I lack any sort of imagination. So that is my message. And of course, we need a timestamp. So I'm just going to stick that one in of today and now and just click insert. 
okay? So that's what our message is are going to look like. I'm just going to duplicate this one and make this one perhaps maybe five minutes in the future, this time from John Wu to Anya Kubo going, hey, because again, this is a really bad chat. So there we go. Okay, we have two messages in, uh, I guess, chronological order. Now let's get to getting these messages and showing them based on the user that we click. So this is going to be quite cool. Let's do it. So this is going to involve some more list views. So I'm going to get a list view and on the left, I'm just going to show my users that are available to me. At the moment, it's just going to be me and John Wu. And then we'll go have another list, this time of the messages themselves. So another list view just over here to display the messages. Okay, great. And finally, I'm going to have a form because the form is going to submit the message that we type. So I'm just going to whack that in here, just like so. I'm going to get rid of the header. I'm going to keep the body and then I'm just going to have a text area as well. So let's put in a text area like this and perhaps let's change the label to type your message here. And then the value is going to be enter your message. Okay. And then this can be submit. Sure. Why not? So there we go. So first things first, we're going to have to write a query to get unique users. Okay. Because at the moment we're going to use the posts that filter out all the unique users. So for this, we are going to have to, um, in fact, let's not write a query. Let's write a JavaScript transformer to do this. So I'm going to say this is unique or get unique users. And what we're going to do is, so the data that we're going to be working with is the get posts data. I want to get all the posts, every single one. And of course, at the moment, we only have two posts by two users. But when we add another post from myself, I'll show you that this is working. So let's define unique users or unique authors to be more precise. And I'm going to use object of values to get the value of the data. I'm going to reduce the array of posts with the post itself. And if there is no array of posts, post author, make sure that is spelt exactly the same way. Then array of posts, post author, it's going to be the post. And then we're going to return the array of posts. Okay, so that is how you get all the unique authors. Oops. So essentially what you're doing is looking in the array and you're filtering out all the object based by the author and just returning the unique authors. Okay, so that's what I am doing here. So let's save that. So now this just means that on here, so first off, I'm going to get the, so get unique users value and get its length. Next, I'm just going to drag in some text like so. And instead of this, I'm going to, well, let's just make this a P tag. And I'm going to go into get unique users value, first one, and get the author name. Oops, make sure to add the object. Okay. Make sure to add that, that's important, and make sure that this was in the right space too. Okay, so great. So we are mapping out the names onto text 
elements, we can also get the user's avatars. So I'm just going to use the circular image for this. Just drag it in like so. Just make it small. And drag that back in here. So once again, we're going to go into the get unique users value and loop over each one to get the avatar image. So author avatar. And great. So we have our users here. The next thing that I want to happen is I want to trigger a click. So if we click on, so perhaps we should put this in a container just so that it's very obvious if we click on a user. So there we go. I'm just going to get rid of the styling of this. So I'm going to get rid of the header and then just make this a little bit bigger. And I'm just going to also get rid of the border because I don't really want a border on these. I just want them to be kind of transparent. Okay, great. So now let's trigger a click. So what do we want to happen? Well, if I click on here, I want to see all the messages between Anya and Anya. So that will be null. That will just be me. So if I click on John Wu, I want to see all the messages between me, the user and John Wu. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to essentially uh, write a event handler for this. But first off, we're going to have to write some, you guessed it, more queries. So the query I'm going to write this time is get messages to user. And we're going to look in the colors resource. The collection we're going to look in this time is messages. And we're going to find anything that has from and then the messenger user. So from John, essentially. So I'm just going to hard code John Wu in here for now. And then to me, so the user, which is text to value. So I'm just going to use that instead of hard coding it. Okay, so great. So that is the query I want to run. Let's see what that returns back. That should just return one message back. That is correct. So that is our get messages to user query. Let's write another query, making sure to save that one. And this time it's going to be get messages from user, user being me. Okay. And this time we're going to get the resource query colors, look in the collection messages. And this time from is going to be me. So that is text to value. And two is going to be John Wu, which I'm hard coding at the moment, but this won't be hard coded for long. So that is a way to get messages from and to each other. And now we need to get both of them and then sort them by a chronological order. So once again, I'm going to use a JavaScript transformer to do this. And this is going to be get all messages. Okay. So for this, I'm going to define all messages. And all messages is essentially just going to be get messages from user data and I'm just going to concat it with get messages to user data. Okay, so that's all I've done. And now we're going to filter them by timestamp. So const descending messages. And I'm going to get all messages. I'm going to use the JavaScript method of sort to essentially sort them by the timestamp. So a time stamp. So the first items time stamp, we're sorting one after the other. We're going to use local compare B time stamp. Okay, and then we're just going to return back the descending messages. So let's preview that all messages not defined, making sure to spell everything correctly, of course turn descending messages. Okay, so there we go. The messages are in descending order. As soon as we add more, we will see that. Okay, so let's save that and that will run that transformer will run. This is looking good. Okay, so on trigger of this, so if we click this, 
container, we're going to have to add an event handler. And that is to essentially get messages from user, that's correct, but also get messages to user. Okay, so that's what I'm doing. I'm essentially rerunning those queries and by rerunning them, it will trigger this transformer to do its thing as well. One other thing I want to do is actually set some temporary state. So I'm going to show you how to do that. We can set temporary state because I want to save the user that I have clicked on. So I'm going to save this as messenger user. And the initial value for this is just going to be null. However, I want to set this value. So I'm going to set on click. I'm going to set temporary state. The state is going to be messenger user. And the value of this, I want to set to get unique user value I author. Okay, so whatever I clicked on here, I want to save it to state of messenger user. Okay, and I'm doing this for a reason. I'm going to show you right now. So first off, actually, let's map out the messages onto here, right? So let's actually do this in containers. I'm going to drop in a container and then I'm not going to have a header. So let's get rid of the header. And then in here, I'm just going to drag in lots of text, really. So this will say the name of who this is from. I'm also going to have the actual message itself, of course. So actually, let's also have the date before we do anything else. We've got a name and a date. Perhaps let's move the date up here. Uh, and then I'm just going to make this a little bit thinner. We're going to drag in some more text here. And we are now going to actually get our messages. So we're going to get all messages value. I'm going to loop to get the time stamp. OK, so that's what we're doing. However, we're also going to wrap this in a new date object because we want to change this to a more readable format. Uh, so we do this with two locale string and call it. Making sure that this is all in curly braces too. OK, wonderful. And this does not need to be curly braces any more. OK, so that's just uh, a more readable format, I think. Uh, local date string, let's do, let's not do the time. Great, and then also the name we need. So once again, I'm gonna now go into get all messages value. I'm gonna loop over everything that comes back and get the from, okay? And of course we need the message itself. So I'm just gonna drag that below, I'm gonna get all messages value I and actually get the message itself. Okay, and then perhaps let's also put in a divider. And great. So cool. So now if we perhaps just click this trigger, we should just see messages from Anya and John Wu. And of course, if we click on this, we should just see messages from Anya. But to do this, of course, we just hard coded John Woo in here, right? We need to get rid of this. So all I'm going to do is now get the state that we saved. So that's the messenger user value. OK, and just save and run that and do the same for here. So instead of hard coding John Woo, messenger user value and save and run it. So now if we trigger click. I don't know why there's so many of these. Oh, that's because we need to get all messages value length. Great. OK, so again, if we now click on John Wu, we'll see all the messages from Anya and John Wu. 
And if we click on Anya, we should see nothing. Great. Now let's get to actually adding messages. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do next. Let's get to it. So let's go ahead and add a new resource query. This is going to be add message singular. We're going to use colors. The collection is going to be messages. And we're going to insert one. So insert one message. So what we're going to do is just create the object. So the timestamp, I'm going to use the new date object in order to get that from I'm going to just use text to value because that's what we've been using. We've just been using this two is going to be again, we're going to get the uh, state. So the messenger user value. So whatever we save to state because that's going to be who we are messaging. It's whoever we clicked on here, right? So whoever we're in conversation with and the message Well, the message is actually going to be whatever the value of the text area is. So text area one value. So that's all it's going to be. I'm just going to preview that and save it. Maybe just format this a little bit nicer. So that is it. Save. And then we're going to have to add an event handler for this. So on submit, control the query, add message. That sounds good to me. And then on success of this, right? So once this is run on success, well, we want to essentially get messages from user again, right? So do that and get messages to users again. So we want to rerun those so that it gets all the messages again. Okay, so let's test it out. I'm going to click on John Woo, trigger click. So we're on John Woo. Test and click submit. So that should run and then we re-get all our messages and that shows up. Wonderful. Apart from the text is not really showing up. I don't know why. Text area one value. Let's have a look in here. Let's go to our messages. Test. Uh, we seem to have got one. Let's delete this. So the message here. Oh, we've used two S's. That's why. Okay. So that's my bad. Just use one S. Click save. So let's do that again. Submit. It should rerun the messages. And ta da! There we have it. So I'm just going to delete this one with the two S's. And this is looking good. So everything is now working. Let's carry on. So we've done the feed. We've done the timeline. We've done the inbox where we can message specific people. Okay. And see all their messages and then go hello and literally message them on the app. This is looking wonderful. Okay, we can make this also a fixed height so that then we have to scroll if we wish. That is totally up to us. Perhaps that is a good thing, especially when we're going to be getting, you know, more details later. So let's make this fixed too. So those two things are going to be fixed. I'm just going to move this up. So no matter how many more users we have, no matter how many messages, uh, this should stay the same. And then we could just scroll. Perhaps we should do that for the feed too. In fact, let's make this fixed. And let's make the timeline fixed as well. So everything is now fixed. Great. So one last thing to do, I want to be able to upload things from the app itself. Let's do it. So for this, I'm actually going to have an image preview because I want to see what uh, image we have uploaded. So we're going to have an image preview like so, and then I'm just going to have an image. But of course, the image won't really show up unless we have something to show in here. So what I'm going to do for this is say that we're going to get the S3 uploader. So actually, let's actually find the S3 uploader component, S3 uploader, and just put it here under the image. And this just means that I can get the 
S3 uploader. Last uploaded file URL and display it once we have uploaded something. And of course, I also want a text input to be able to show the title in here too. Okay, so that's all I am going to do. And then we can also position the label to be at the top. And this is going to be the title of the post. And we're also going to have a place to put the description of the post as well. Of course, the author is going to be us because this is our app. So we don't need to worry about that. So description and the date is just going to be whatever date that we have. OK, so there we go. This is looking wonderful. And next, we just need a button that will confirm the post so we can post it to our database as well. OK, so we're going to be posting it to our MongoDB database. So let's just say this post and then let's change the color of this. I'm just going to change it to be this lovely orange right here. Great. So this is looking good. Let's carry on. So we're going to do the add post query because that is an easy one. I'm going to add a resource query. Let's call this add post. And this is going to go into the colors resource. It's going to look in the collection posts and it's going to insert one. And once again, we're just going to have a timestamp, which is going to be new date. We're going to have the image URL, which is going to be the S3 uploader one last uploaded file URL. We're going to have the title, which we're literally just going to get the text input one from text input one value. Same for description. We're going to go into the text value two. So text input to value. We're going to get the author, which we know by now is text to value author avatar, making sure that it's felt exactly the same as in our database. And let's just get the avatar image for this. So avatar image source. Views, we're going to hard code as zero. And the ID, well, I'm just going to generate a unique ID using the UUID method, V1, and call it. OK, so that's our object to create a new post. Let's save it. And on success, we just want to get the query, get all the posts again. OK, we want to rerun the posts, so save that. Wonderful. And once again, on success, we also want to control the component and go back to the home page. So let's get the tabbed container view and go to feed. Great. So those are the two things that will happen on success. So the next thing we want to do is, of course, hook up the S3 loader. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's make a new resource query. This time, let's create a new resource. And I am going to select Amazon S3. Let's go ahead and call this Amazon S3. And then the bucket name, well, this is stuff that we're going to have to do in Amazon right now. So let's do it. So let's go to Amazon. I'm just going to select I am user and click next. So of course, I have already done all this sign up. Please go ahead and sign up. It is free. Just make sure to sign up with the correct steps that I am doing right now and click sign in once you have done. So here is my S3 dashboard. This is what you should look like. If in doubt, just make sure to go to the same URLs that I have 
okay? And I'm gonna have to create a bucket. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a bucket here. My bucket name is going to be retool bucket, just like so. And I am just going to uncheck this. I acknowledge this and create a bucket. Okay, so there we go. There is my bucket. Let's go ahead and click that. Now under permissions, I'm gonna have to put in a bucket policy. So I'm just going to edit this and paste in this what I've written before, making sure to change this to retool bucket one or whatever you call your bucket. Okay, so just go ahead and do that and save the changes. One other thing you're gonna have to do is change the object ownership. So please scroll down and edit the object ownership and simply check this box right here for ACL enabled and acknowledge it as well. Okay, and save. You're also gonna have to enable cause. So just go all the way down here, click edit, and paste in this code just like I am, okay? So take your time, take a break, pause this and make sure that it's exactly the same and then click Save Changes. Great, so this is looking good, let's carry on. So the S3 bucket name, well, we know that this is Retool bucket one. Then we're going to go into here under users and add a new user. I'm going to call this Retool Ania. I'm going to need an access key. I'm going to add it to admin. Next, review, create user. Okay, so here is our secret access key. Make sure to make a copy of that somewhere and save it. And then we're going to go back in here and paste it in here. And then we also have the access key ID. Okay, and let's just test the connection. Great, and let's create the resource. So now when we go to the upload page and select the S3 uploader, the resource we're gonna choose is Ania S3. The bucket name is retool bucket one. And this we're gonna to have to change to public read and that should be it okay so now let's try upload to s3 so i'm going to upload this image of lofferton and ta-da there we have the picture now i just want to hook this up properly so then when we post this it gets posted to our database so we're gonna have to add an event handler and that is to add post, add a singular post and the method is trigger. Okay, so now when we click the post button, this should work. Let's fill out the fields of the title and the description, making the app in full mode. And just go ahead and click post and we'll be redirected to the feed and you should see our image here. Even though we're not seeing the image, why is this? Let's have a look at the code one more time. Ah, we need a space between the end bracket here. So just make sure that is there. And please apply this to any other images that we have in the app. Okay, and there we have it. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. It was really fun uh, showing you how to make an MVP that people can use. You know, you can actually test it out on people, get feedback. You know, this is a work in progress and this only took us a few hours. So I think it's the perfect solution for building MVP products and, you know, really getting your ideas out there. 
Thanks so much again for watching and I will see you again soon.